Hello guys, welcome to the Switch Indie Fix podcast. This is episode 21 of the podcast dedicated to everything indie on the Nintendo Switch. This week we'll be going through our uh, the latest indie game news coming from the Nintendo Direct. And then we're going on to give our impressions of games we've played this week like Evil Land Legendary Edi- Edition and Tetris 99. I keep saying we because I have a very special guest on the show. This week's guest comes from all the way from our Discord server and it is Darth Stridius. Say hello Darth. Hello, Adam. How's it going? Yeah, it's going very well. Uh, it was kind of like an impromptu uh, invite for you. you. You kind of said you you had some free time and, and I said, oh, well, I'm just about to record, to re, uh, record the podcast. So, uh, yeah, we kind of made it work. Yeah, you know, it was, yeah, pretty random. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've wanted That's... to be on this podcast for a while. I know. The Rain World review did yeah. not really work out, did not hit yeah. my uh, interest as much as I thought it would. Yeah. But yeah. No, it's it's always it's, like I love having guests on, but there's always like you know so many things. It all, it comes down to like scheduling and then making sure the guest has the right equipment to be able to record themselves. And I'm glad that it's finally uh, it's finally worked out for us. And and you're even going to be on the Pokemon podcast too. Yeah, especially that I'm across the ocean from you, so yeah, there's time yeah. restraints also That's it. of a few hours. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, so we are doing the the Switch Indie Fix podcast today. Um, just a general reminder that we need your questions for the podcast. Uh, if you have any Nintendo or indie game related questions and want them to be read out on the show, just head over to switchindiefix.com forward slash SIF podcast. Uh, there's just a Google form there that you can fill in. And um, yeah, it, then I'll be able to uh, answer your question on the next podcast. Plus, if you're looking for a fun gaming community to join, why not check out the SIF Discord server? Just head over to switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord to join. Uh, Darf, you can kind of say how great the Discord server is. Uh, that's how, kind of how very, everyone's very everyone's very welcoming. I'm a huge part yeah. of it. I yes, always, you are. I'm yeah. Always open and talk to anyone about anything. Mm-hmm. And if you like Tingle, the better. Yeah, definitely. If you like Tingle, it's the uh, the right Discord server. <laughs> so as always, we'll start section one off with this week's news. Uh, this week we only have. Three items on the list, uh, which is half a baker's dozen, but one of them is very substantial because it is the Nintendo Direct. So what news. is a baker's dozen? Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> There's probably around 12 I, hours I, in I, that one alone. I, 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 I didn't want to like totally copy kind of funny, so I, I was like, oh yeah, it's half a baker's dozen, <laughs> even though it's, yeah, even though it's like, I guess it's a, a quarter of a baker's dozen, yeah. kind of, nearly. Um, so let's just start off. Uh, what did you think of the direct in total, not just the, the indie news stuff? I think it wasn't very impressive. I mean, it was our longest drought between two mm-hmm. directs, and I have a funny feeling they were waiting for some last-minute um, trailers and stuff, and they just yeah. took them so long. I think they mm-hmm. wanted it to become huge because everyone's saying, "Oh, 2019 is going to be a very slow year for Nintendo. They have nothing announced. Yeah. We know there's Animal Crossing, Pokemon, and..." Uh-huh. And whatever, uh, and maybe Bayonetta Yoshi, free, yeah. and Yoshi. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. let's just say, okay, look, come on, guys, this is what we have coming. Yes, yeah. I mean, they're not and all I'm... our big Nintendo huge story games. Yeah. But we have all these other stuff from other companies coming to this to this console. I mean, we didn't even have to mention Luigi's Mansion and other stuff. Like they didn't have to. Yeah. We know that stuff is coming. So what's the point of? Yeah, I think that's them. what's so cool is like. Um... What I was really happy to, happy about was that there were so many surprises in this in this direct, and and I kind of feel like we're now in an age where like surprises don't happen that much in in press conferences anymore because everything gets leaked and everything kind of gets spoiled. But um, with Link's Awakening at the end, like I I feel like no one had any idea that that Nintendo were remaking it and that it was going to be shown in this direct. I mean, a lot of leaks are more also third parties and not yeah, first true. party stuff. And I think Nintendo, how they work is that they, a lot of the companies they work with are either very close to them, mm-hmm. like Link Awakening, or I'm sure like Platinum Games, because they're also pretty quiet yeah, all on their based stuff. Based in Japan, and yeah. Like, they, we haven't heard any leaks, like, really from Platinum Games ever. No. Right? And so Nintendo can kind of keep their cars close to their chest. And, I mean, like, Tetris Battle Royale was the one I would say maybe should have leaked earlier, because it's so obscure and so yeah something that people would have been attracted to mm. and but i think I, I think tetris 99 it might have been like a little hidden gem because i think people think may have heard the title tetris 99 and thought okay it's just another like generic. tetris port or, or, or remake or kind of twist but and that's and that's i guess what it is but i feel like 
you know how they've got got uh they've made like this this tetris battle royale has just kind of really shocked people and it's all i seem to be seeing and reading about on twitter at the minute yeah and i mean it's also awesome that nintendo got to first say in it because it's coming to other consoles mm. and they yeah i think tetris 99 has tweeted about going to other consoles the day after okay because i think yeah but it's still nice that nintendo got the first same yeah because definitely it helps your, your on i mean only thing that really does is helps your online services i'm yeah, sure like yeah a huge portion of people were like, well, let me just get online now because there's a reason. Mm-hmm. I love Tetris. Yeah. This is a cool twist on Tetris. Let me pay the $20 yeah, to it, get it because it's like uh, it's worth it. $20 in a way, right? And then they get all the other yeah, definitely. other possibilities. Because I mean, I'm sure people who play Splatoon and stuff who were like, oh, I'm not really that interested in it. Mm. Now are like, well, now I can get back into Splatoon online. Yeah. I, mean, I can get back into ARMS online. So this doesn't just help... Um, people playing tetris i think it helps yeah. the nintendo online infrastructure too by getting more people yeah, I think, in, invested into it that, yeah i think you're right like it's i think it's really clever especially making it free uh because like you're saying it kind of softens the blow of people signing up for the for the monthly direct uh sorry for the not the monthly direct for the monthly online because like you know you said like Per month, I think it's tw- uh, sorry. Per, per year, year, it's twenty dollars a year. Yeah, twenty dollars a year. And even if people are signing up just m- for the first month, like it might only be like four dollars or something like that. But um, yeah, I think it's a good way to get people in the door and, and be like, okay, yeah, now there is some value in having this this switch online structure. Because also, you think that Nintendo will probably have other stuff coming, right? Like this is not just one time. I'm sure it's not a one time thing. No, I, I'm sure too. And, and like, it I just hope people, so. people think like, well, if they do this, I mean, there's probably some other free games. Like, why not maybe do Picross with an online component mm. if you can, or like yeah. smaller games which people love yeah, but like, are too common. If you want me to put it that way, to yeah, yeah, in normal and people are like, oh, I don't really care because I can find it anywhere. But adding some kind mm-hmm. of online twist to it, like bringing SNES, as, sorry, NES games and having an online twist is something right already. Yeah, and now yeah, this. The, I guess. And even with leaderboards, like yeah. you could do a game with the leaderboard and it would work well. Yeah, the, and that's kind of like I, I want to talk a little bit about it later in the conversation portion, but um, it's kind of the only thing I was disappointed with about Tetris 99 is that there is no. I kind of wish you could kind of team up with friends and be, all be in the same kind of ba- um, so 99 based. battle. Yeah, not so much squad based, but just be like, okay, I want to, I want to compete against, oh. like, say, me and you wanted to compete in the same kind of, um, the same kind of like arena with with ninety seven other people. Like, oh, I think okay. that would be really so you're cool. Like, have friends join your game, but you're still going against each other. Exactly. Have the fight yeah, of like, and yet, oh, I beat you, kind of. Yeah, idea. I came, I came tenth, and you came twelfth or whatever. Like, I, I, I was really hoping that was what, what was going to be in it because I thought it would be a really awesome game for us to play as like a community because it's free like everyone seems to be enjoying it and i was like yeah you know if you could if you could have like a private game and set it up so that just you you and your friends are playing against all these other strangers like yeah i think it'd be really cool to see who's the best tetris player but uh right now like there's no no option to do that i think that will be incoming i'm assuming this is very they want it out the door you know what i mean like yeah like the base yeah the base kind of product i guess and yeah i, I think if it, if it keeps the traction it's getting like hopefully it will be updated and, and new um kind of mechanics and new modes will be added what i hope my dream and wait what from this idea it will be if you ever remember on xbox 360 they had the game show one versus 100 on it okay. which was like a trivia yeah. game show and mm-hmm. it'd be cool to have that idea on yeah. switch kind of like the uh that hq one on phones, I can't think of the name of it now. Uh, but okay. like a, a trivia version of this, which I yeah. think would be cool. Yeah. I, mean, I know yeah, like phones, like... but having a Nintendo, uh, Nintendo one with like Nintendo questions. Yeah, like, yeah, that would be cool. And having yeah, it and like way. that, yeah, I, I, like, I think, like you said, uh, other developers are going to see this kind of take on the Battle Royale. And yeah, I think we're going to see other games like this where, where it's like, okay, yeah, maybe it is kind of a like, like pick cross or some other kind of older game that it has always been around being like okay well now we're going to put you against 98 other people and and see who's the best like i think that's really cool i mean but yeah uh, go on. i was thinking maybe like i mean cool some indie games coming out with some idea like even as leaderboards mm. like something like barney of isaac coming out with like a very simple like 
uh, level design where everyone can go through yeah. it, or even like Super Mario. Um, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but it's kind of like builder where it's like you can each one creates a level and each week they choose a level and mm. you know yeah kind of like a daily a daily because that's what uh, i don't know if it's on the switch but i know on the pc that's what the binding of isaac has it's like a daily challenge mm-hmm. where everyone has the same game seed um and then you play through it and you basically get scores on on whatever actions you do and then at the end there's like a leaderboard like a global leaderboard with whoever did had the highest score on that day they did that with the uh, f- um first suit mario um Mario Maker, I know that they mm. would have like each week they would do like one level. Yeah, people run yeah. through it and look at level. There's so many twists like people can do with this idea, and I think people are thinking, well, yeah, why not? We doesn't have to be a shooter. Why not use something else mm. and make it fun? Yeah, it, like it really could be anything. And because Tetris works but, with uh, blocks any... and, and blocking people and stuff, it makes it more interesting. Mm. We're not just doing a solo mm. thing and just a leaderboard. So there's interaction. Yeah. With, it makes it a bit more, yeah, yeah, a bit more interactive and a bit, it, it makes it a bit more competitive. Obviously, there's a competitive aspect with leaderboards, but when you see people that are like blocking you and, and, and sending you kind of extra rows, like it really kind of picks up the pace and kind of gets you nervous and like, oh God, okay, I need to like really concentrate and focus on doing this right now. Otherwise, I'm going to be kind of out of the game. Exactly. But yeah. I, I think we should uh, get on with our first news story. Well, that's so, part of it, right? Um, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the kind of, um, from the Nintendo Direct, there was some indie delights on the show. Uh, so Wednesday's Nintendo Direct uh, was the January one, which everyone was expecting, but then it didn't happen, but then it finally did uh, on the 13th of February. Uh, there was some massive first-party and third-party games, like we talked about uh, Tetris 99, Link, uh, Zelda Link's Awakening, and Mario Maker 2. Uh, but there were also some, also some smaller indie titles. Um, first up, um, I, I don't know. I want to know what your opinion on this is, Darth. Would you consider Box Boy and Box Girl an indie title? Um, in terms of popularity, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that would call them an indie game title. I mean, mm-hmm. I think it became popular on the 3DS. When sh- yeah. I mean, I don't think it was. I mean, I didn't know. I kind of knew about it, but I didn't know really know about it. So I would call them indie. In terms yeah. Of, I think it was just a unique twist on a 3ds game mm-hmm. that people put out I, was it was the first and only on 3ds do you know or was it on other they so there was this is the the fourth game in the oh, series right. and the first three were on the 3ds and i actually did a bit of research because um i kind of wrote a post oh, about so the indie highlights from direct labs yeah uh from the Nintendo Direct, and people were saying, oh, why have you put this on, on the indie list? Because it's not an indie game, it's published by Nintendo, which it is, but uh, yeah, it's developed by HAL Laboratory, which they're technically like an independent st- studio that works very closely with Nintendo. So that's why I've put it yeah, down as indie. Well, um, sorry, they have they don't, they work closely with Nintendo, but they don't know just to make Nintendo games. I'm correct, they came out with the, uh, no. the, the, um, the phone game there, the robot one. The, um, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, a lot of them are Nintendo. By looking at it, yeah. I'm looking at their list right now. Mm. But yeah, they worked yeah. just like on Apple. They worked on Commodore. They've been around for a very long yeah. time. Yeah, part-time UFO is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm since, sorry. since, since. Oh, really? Did they? I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I heard about a lot yeah. about it from oh, okay. one certain person. Yeah, yeah, I know who you mean. I think yeah. Jared Petty, right? But um, yeah. so yeah. they made that game. That's yeah, on, yeah, Jared Petty. Yeah, uh, yeah. Phone. So yeah, they don't work with Nintendo, but they work a yeah. lot. They were the one. That, didn't they do the original Smash? Yeah, they did. Uh, I, yeah, I they're the really? originators oh, okay. of Smash. They made Super Smash Brothers on yeah. N64. They made Pokemon yeah, Stadium. So I, I don't I know. Mean, they are a big company. I would argue that they have done a yeah. lot with Nintendo. I made a lot of first-party games for Nintendo, like Kirby 64, mm-hmm. all the stadiums on N64. But in terms of nowadays, yeah. in terms but of releasing not. them now, yeah, they're a very mm-hmm. small company. The game is very indie esque. Yeah, like it looks like an indie game, right? It's so simplistic and and uh, like the mechanics are very simple to pick up. Pick up the idea is like that you basically are uh, this box boy called Quibby, and you have to you can like produce boxes. Like it reminds wasn't, me of sorry, uh, wasn't you Quibi bomb, bomb chicken? Um, I think your game is saying Quibi is the other character. You're Box Boy, Box Girl, or just Quibi. No, no, the Box Boy is called Quibi, and the Box Girl is called Quibi. What is the big Box Boy called? Was it not Quibi? Quibi. Yeah, yeah. The main, the, the protagonist is called Quibi. But then Quibi. there's a long one. The 
after he finished the game one. Uh, I think that was what Quibi. was he called? Yeah, no, no, he was called. Oh. Sorry, Quaddy. QB maybe. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm, okay. I don't know the series that well, so I thought I got confused. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean. If it's just today, I was writing the the post about it, and like I said, I posted it on Reddit, and some guy like was all like blah 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 blah. So I was researching it, but yeah, I didn't get the name of the 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 kind of rectangle shaped guy. But yeah, so it's basically you you can work with a friend together uh, by stacking boxes to overcome obstacles. Um, so yeah, and it's going to be out on April 26th on the Nintendo eShop. So I think thought that was like a kind of cool way after the Mario Maker 2 announcement to kind of get the ball rolling in the in the uh, Nintendo Direct. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting in terms of like you had this huge third party game that everyone was talking about and wanting. And it's like, will it be a port? Will it not mm-hmm. be a port? And then you have the smaller smaller game, which is like, oh, I mean, again, has a huge fan fan following. Adding a co-op yeah. idea, which is a like, huge for the Switch, because you know the two Joy Con, mm-hmm. two players, boom, right there. Yeah, easy. Um, yeah. And as yeah, exactly as mentioned, um, Bomb Chicken, it's very jump and one other action, so it's easy to follow mm. of what to do. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it's kind of uh, with with the rectangle guy. I think as well, it also that kind of adds in like an easy mode yeah. to it. So for younger people, like you know, Nintendo right now, they seem to be all about like couch co-op and accessibility. So like any game that kind of passes through that them has both of these yeah, it's aspects. Yeah, a funky then. mode of this but game. It's, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's the the biggest kind of uh, it's the biggest box boy game that's been released. There's over two hundred and seventy levels, so. I imagine I could see it coming out for like fourteen ninety nine. So I think there's going to be a lot of bang for your buck when uh, when it's. Oh released. yeah, for sure. And I'm sure they're going to be may have pre purchases and sales on it, and mm. you know True. it will yeah. come yeah. very popular. I mean, I'm leaning towards getting it at some point. And you can see that like okay. Nintendo's yeah. Sword Switch has been trying to add in co op um, mode to like yeah. not it's not a Switch game, but the um, Treasure Tracker, Toad Treasure Tracker, adding co op mm. is a huge thing. I was not really interested in that yeah. game. Yeah. And now with co-op, it's yeah. like, this could be a cool hang with a friend, chat about whatever you want, but also play mm-hmm. a game. And this has that idea too, where yeah, it's not, you're not invested, like overcooked, where it's like, you gotta do this, do this, do this. And you're not talking yeah, yeah. and hanging out. Yeah, it's a little bit a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. So it's like, okay, cool, let's play a game. We can talk about what, we can shoot the shit, but we can also play a game. Yeah, that's it. Like, I think it's, I like it, uh, these type of games, because for my girlfriend, just to play with her, like, the, she's not a gamer, really, but she kind of understands games from playing Game Boy as a kid, and games like this are, like, perfect, where I can just be like, okay, here's a Joy-Con, here's two buttons that you have to press, and, like, let's work together, and, uh, yeah, Ex- work, play for exactly. this game. Exactly, it brings back that more old-school kind of gaming, and, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but, like, yeah. I was talking to a friend who yeah. has a kid, the kid loves the old Kirby yeah. games because it's so mm-hmm. easy. I mean, you back in the, on, on yeah, the so NES, it's, you understand. float, you have two buttons, you boom, you get it, you know what to do. And this has that idea. I mean, yes, mm-hmm. you can love it as in the gamer. I'm not saying all, all gamers are gamers, but there's this different level. Yeah. Like, there's different levels in terms of like, you know, how well you can play a, a game. You're... And this is yeah. easier yeah. co op game. You're right. I mean, like... Overcooked is, I played with mm-hmm. people who love, like, who are gamer, like, game all the time and people who game once in a while yeah and that game is very frustrating when you people who game once in a while because you have to explain to them a bit more the mechanics and what to do yeah and it gets yeah. it gets more mind-boggling this is very let's just chill have some mm. fun play a game yeah and, and for that price yeah. point and that's it's a perfect amount because you have a lot of levels it's a cutish game yeah you're a couple in the games so that fits the whole boyfriend girlfriend vibe mm-hmm yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one that I can see playing with my girlfriend. The next game that I want to talk about, maybe not so much, uh, because then surprisingly, the next indie announcement comes from Ninja Theory, uh, one of the new development studios that was bought by Microsoft yep. last year. Uh, Ninja Theory are bringing their critically acclaimed title, Hellblade, sending you a sacrifice to the Switch later this spring. Uh, the game is a psychological horror set in Cel- uh, Celtic slash Viking times and follows Senua as she tries to deal with the death of her loved one. Um, It's surprising that the Switch can run such a a game because graphically it looks stunning. Uh, I personally have been waiting 
kind of I don't know why I've been waiting to play the game, but I, I kind of hoped it was going to come to the Switch, but didn't really expect I it have to. A, for me, is a game that I would not want to play on a Switch for a certain reason. Is because mm. that kind of game you want to be immersed in that environment. Yeah. And because it's, I don't want to play the game portable, so I don't mm. want to use it as what the Switch is halfway meant for. And because of how the Switch yeah. works, having headphones is a pain. With this is what I was going to say, yeah. So it's like it's, it feels like this is yeah. like put everything to a switch. Everyone's going to play it. Why not? Like it, it mm. feels kind of as like a cop out in a way. So yeah, it's it was one of these strange announcements that no one really expected. And for me, like I, I'm kind of quite excited to play it on the switch because I just got this this new Bluetooth adapter. So I'm kind of like cool. I can now easily just plug my switch in plug the adapter in into my into the switch dock and then just sit on the sofa with headphones on and listen to it because everyone that's played the game says okay you should play it with headphones because there's like a lot of whispering and it's supposed to portray her like inner thoughts and inner demons so that that's kind of why i'm excited to play it now because i feel like i have the means to play it how how it was designed to be played i mean not as diverge subject but i hope that the next twist next version of the switch mm-hmm. or pro control has kind of like what the xbox has where you can put a mic into the into the yeah. ha- hands into your controller yeah that would fix so much even if like, it was like a joy con um adapter mm. you can read joy cons in with a little bit of juice that can plug a, a headphone into that yeah. that would solve so many problems and this game needs that immersion mm-hmm. of i need to hear what this person thinking and feeling like it's in my head yeah, you know what I mean. And on the switch, if you're just a normal switch user in terms of like I'm using it on the bus to go to work, I'm you know using it on my TV once in a while. It doesn't really fit that. You're not gonna be like, oh, I'm going to go on the bus. Let me play this game. Yeah, yeah. You need to it kind of fit ded- that dedicate time game. to it, dedicate yourself to it. Yeah. Because like all the other games, a lot of like Nintendo games are perfect for that. Like mm-hmm. when, uh, like the big ones, Nintendo, uh, Mario, and the Links, the Zeldas, are perfect for that. Let me play 20 minutes now. I can yeah. come back to it. This yeah. game feels like I want to be. Inv- I want to take a Saturday afternoon, mm. Saturday morning, make my coffee, sit down, and just experience. I'm gonna play it. through it. Yeah. And yeah, yes, that's... that switch it can work if you're in a perfect setup, but mm-hmm. not everyone has that setup yeah. to make that work. And it feels like I. It feels like Ninja Theory is just trying to get their last game that can be multi platform on this console mm-hmm. because now everything will be on xbox yeah that's what i was going to ask do you think it's like do you think it was just kind of a deal that was already set in set in stone before the uh microsoft purchase or do you think it's like microsoft and nintendo been like best besties and you know like letting them share I've, their their ips with each other i feel like the, microsoft's made their when they purchased their the company is they've made mm-hmm. it that like Anything prior to our purchase yeah. is still yours. Mm-hmm. We are purchasing from this point forward. Yeah. Right? right? Because like all the companies they bought have had previous games uh-huh. come out on all consoles. Yeah. Like or a working Sidian, with other Obsidian's publishers. New games coming to Exactly. The, to or console, uh, Compulsion's... Right? Um, uh, the Compulsion game. I can't think of it right now. It was, it was it Gearbox who made it. Um, that... Bioshocky, oh, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, we happy few. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, had, they purchased it before those games came out, and they were like, "Well, yeah. you can do whatever you want with it." And I think that Microsoft, being the friendly neighbor of mm-hmm. the consoles, were like, "Look, why not do it? It just helps. It helps us because your name becomes more known." Yeah. So if you like send a sacrifice, be like, "Oh, where can I get the next game?" Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, it's on Microsoft. Yeah. Oh, let me get. You know what I mean? It helps Microsoft put their name out too in a weird way, right? Yeah, I know. It's all, it's all marketing, I think it's because right, they owned it. Them. Exactly. And the IP is technically Ninja Theory. It's not Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming Microsoft per- bought the rights to the company going forward, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And not buying the I rights of all their so, IPs. Yeah. yeah, because some of their IP, like, I guess it's not their IP, but they made, like, some uh, DMC and stuff like that and... Yeah, I guess they also were contracted like, to do that, but, you know. And I'm pretty sure someone made this game. It was not um, Ninja Theory who made it for the Switch. I think there was another. Yeah, that's what uh, I It was ported by here. another company. Uh, Kujad? Uh, 
Kulach, uh, they're a exactly. Polish, Polish dev, uh, development studio who worked on titles such as Street Fighter, Resident Evil, Dragon's Dogma, and Dragon's Dogma. Uh, but this is their first ever job part in a Switch game, or part in a game to the Switch, I should say. So yeah, it's it's just like an interesting tidbit, like uh, quite surprising. Um, but either way, I'm kind of happy that it's coming. Um, it might be the first game that we see fail, maybe not doing so well on the Switch, uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Okay, good. So the next game that was shown in the Direct is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which was the uh, a game kickstarted back in 2015, which is quite uh, hard to believe that it's been that long. Uh, the game seems to have been plagued with development difficulties, making it feel like it's been coming soon for years. Uh, now there seems to be a more concrete window of its release, as it is slated for summer of this year. If it'll actually come out remains to be seen. However, if you're a Metroidvania fan, you should have this game on your radar, as it is developed by Koji uh, Igarashi, the series producer of Castlevania. Um, have you got any interest in Bloodstained, Daph? Uh, yes, I do. Have you played the Curse of the Moon? No. Was it, sorry, what was the first? Curse of the Moon. Uh, yeah, I think it was Curse of the Moon. It was Curse of the Moon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I played that one, and it's very old school, Castlevania esque yeah. kind of game. And it was a cool twist on it. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind me going a bit, uh, taking a bit on this, no, no, that sure. it was, you, were, you were a few characters, and you can switch between them. Yeah. And each character was unique in how what they can do. Okay. So instead of getting different weapons or different, yeah, weapons to do what you need to do, you switch between characters. Okay, that sounds cool. It was a very awesome twist on the old Castlevania kind of games. Yeah, it was very fun. Not that long. You can play it probably in five hours. Mm -hmm. You can get to get through the game. So I'm very interested in this newer version of Castlevania, like a Castlevania kind of game. Yeah, and if the music is as good as the, I think the the composer is the composer of also. Uh, for, uh, the old Castlevania games, because I think Curse and Moon was also f the same composer. Okay. It can be awesome atmosphere, awesome gameplay, a twist in terms of like more modern graphics of that three, two, two and a half, two and a half D, yeah. three D background. Um, the I don't care about much as a character customization. Yeah. Which they showed. Yeah. They didn't have to show, because like you're not, you're not. It's not an immersive game. No. So no, he's kind of. I don't need to be my kind of character. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I don't know. Like honestly, I'm. But it looks interesting. I'm. I'm interested in how he's going to bring this more into the modern. Day, like how the true Castlevania creator. So, yeah, sees it in 2019. Puts it his way. Yeah. Where all the other companies have been putting, making these Metroidvania games mm -hmm. like Hollow Knight and Ori in the Blind Forest and all those. Yeah. It'd be interesting about how he. Will he put his own twist into it, or follow the same formula? Yeah, like I, I, like I said, I think it's it's had like a quite a lengthy and and interesting development cycle. Like I, I was reading today, like there's been a lot of uh, different companies that have been kind of pulling in and out of it, um, helping with the development. Uh, honestly, like I, I'm not that big of a Castlevania fan. Like um, you're kind of selling me a bit on Curse of, Curse of the Moon. Uh, because it's it, a very small it, game, it's, it's not that expensive. Yeah, it's short. It's it's not that expensive, and it sounds like it has like a nice twist, like a nice unique twist to it. But this one, I don't know. There's just yeah, some, and... something about it that it just doesn't look appealing to me. I don't know if it's the art style or the the setting, but I I, I, I... I think it's the art style. Yeah, because for me, that's what it is. Yeah, like, I'm interested in the game, but every time I see the game, I'm like, oof. Yeah. Yeah, there's something off, and it's because you think of all like look at all the new, the modern and Metroidvania games, mm. Hollow Knight, yeah. and Blind Orient Blind Forest. They have awesome looks to them. Yeah, they're beautiful games, but they keep the same 2D art style. Yeah, but that's it. The, as well. your, the platforming is not a 3D thing, which is one has a very much of a. Mm. It feels like they want to make it more um, anime. Yeah. Esque. Yeah, it, I don't know. It's weird because it. it if, like I was reading that it, for a time it was the highest raised Kickstarter game ever. Like it, it raised like five point five million dollars. But it, of course it, it did. Yeah, because you have you have the name people who have money now and people who love those games. Yeah, equals a lot of money. Yeah, but and I yes, feel like it's the same composer who did the old games. Oh, okay. So that's a huge part of it. I mean, 
I'm assuming it will be. I'm sure it'll be a very awesome game. Mm -hmm. And if the price point is around the fifteen dollar range, sorry, I'm not sure when I went in pounds. <laughs> but if it's around that yeah. ten, fifteen range, where it's like not that expensive, but it's a perfect kind of game where I can bring with me and play and have headphones yeah. in. Yeah, I'm sold. I'll buy it. I'll play for a bit. I'll play whenever I want to. It's especially that there's no Castlevania games coming to the mm -hmm. Switch. Yeah. Right. They didn't get the port. No, of, the one of, that came to PS4 uh, yeah, last year. Yeah. I know the one you mean. Of yeah. um, what's it called? The, well, the biggest Symphony of the Night yes, and uh, yeah, um, the other one. Yeah, the, I can't think of the name. I'm gonna try to predict it. Yeah, started with an o R. R. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like an old but, Italian word, right? Yeah, but because they're not getting that, this is a perfect fit for because it's like people who want a Castlevania game. They can get it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think for me, like I'm just gonna maybe wait for the reviews and and if the if because I feel like it's a game that's gonna have really really good mechanics because like these Castlevania games always tend to have like a satisfying kind of not a loop to them, but you you feel like you can control your character oh. and if the reviews Rondo of Blood, sorry, that was Rondo, that was that's it, yeah, and Rondo of Blood. So yeah. uh we had, we we keep, I'm having some te technical difficulties with my mic. I don't know what we kind of ended on there. So I'm just going to say again that I think I'm going to wait for the review scores to come in for uh, Bloodstained and then maybe pick it up if it gets really good re reviews. When also, especially this game will have I think a lot of different um, reviewing companies interested in mm -hmm. it, and we'll see a lot of reviews for this indie game. Yeah, because when you know some indie games have no reviews and nothing other than you yeah, or some yeah. other smaller. Um, in the uh, reviewers, but this will probably have like the IGNs and all that is interest invested in looking at this game before it comes out because it's been such a big yeah. It's got it's got like a big name attached to it, years. and it's it's been going on for forever. <laughs> exactly. I forgot there was one indie game not long ago that was essentially like this, and will probably be the same of everyone. Yeah. Uh, talk about this. Hopefully, it's not gonna be the next uh, mighty number nine. My number nine yeah, yeah. Kickstarter failure because yeah. that's never going to be ending, and I don't want this guy to go down the same route. No, no, me neither. You know, it's made from the same five. Well, five hundred five games are the publishing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So the next game that we saw was um, a game that I never thought would be seen on a Nintendo platform. It's called Dead by Daylight. Uh, in this four v one horror game, you and three friends have to work together to gather resources and open lock gates to escape Dead by Daylight's terrifying world. However, this seemingly simple sounding task is made incredibly harder as you've been haunted, uh, sorry, been hunted by a horrific creature controlled by another player. What's even worse is that this creature has superhuman abilities that help it in the hunt. Will you survive the night? Um, so personally, I think the the part has me a little bit worried. First off, what we saw in the direct, uh, I really didn't think looked good. It looked like a PlayStation Two game running there. Yeah, can I say one thing? Oh, sorry. Go on. That's two. There's one thing. The biggest problem I had was direct. Yeah. Is games that looked good back in the day, looking yeah ugly yeah. on the Switch. Yeah. This one and Assassin's Creed Three mm -hmm. Remastered. That does not look like a remastered game on the Switch. No. It, Sorry. It, that looks like even worse than what it was on the PS3 yeah. and the Xbox 360. I d this game looks like it was out 20 years ago. Yeah, it does. Remastered. It does. And I don't know if that was like the coloration of the game because I think it's like the browns and the greys. It just makes everything look like so dull and lifeless. And when you when you have that on like a small screen. It also screen, pixelated. Yeah. And, and like the video they showed really wasn't good like uh, it, no it was it, like why would i want to play this on yeah this console? yeah it just felt like like when... someone had dragged the, the game through the dirt and was like oh here you go like you'll buy it because it's on the switch so I'm, I'm exactly and that's what i'm getting scared about for the switch a bit is yeah it's a switch everyone's gonna play it yeah. so let me put my game on it but yeah so there was there was mad if they buy this game on it that's it so there was like the the look of the game had me worried and then again like this game is dependent on online multiplayer um, we both yeah. know how Nintendo's online multi, uh, multiplayer structure works. So it's like, you know, if, if you do have enough people to play it with and then you can't connect, this game's just going to totally bomb. And like, But I also feel like this kind of game doesn't fit what the Switch wants to be. No. Because the Switch has always been pop, uh, advertised as a hybrid system. Mm -hmm. Right? A home, home console and something that's portable. Yeah. This game is not a portable game, period. No, you are... It doesn't have 
a multiplayer game and a single player game. It's not like Smash Brothers, where mm. I can play this on the bus by myself, do get spirits, and go on and play with friends when I get home on my TV. Yeah. Right? This game is purely going to be played on a TV. Most people's Switch is a secondary system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some people only had a Switch, but I'm sure a majority of people don't just have a Switch. No. Yeah, right? it's usually paired so, with a PlayStation is, 4 or PC or something. And this game's old enough that people probably or were interested in it have it on another console. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think if I'm correct, it was on it was PS Plus for free or Xbox it, recently for free. It was I think it was PS Plus, yeah. Yeah, so, like it's it's I guess it's in like its last hurrah. Like, you know, they might try and mark it as it as like the du- uh, deluxe edition, like everything that they've yeah. they've because re- they, they have released like quite a lot of content for it. But um it's it, not meant for this console. No. That's where I'm scared about it. It's that again, we were saying a game everyone wants to put a game on a switch. Yeah. And it's getting to a point where the the East Shop is getting just overpopulated with that. Yeah. But on the other hand, like you you could argue Fortnite wasn't made for the Switch, but it's like done really well on there. So like it works. Like I know I think I think the reason Fortnite did so well is because like Epic is a, behind a lot of the online structure with it. And I can't really see Dead by Daylight being as kind of like uh, you know, stable in within themselves to, to kind of host this game on their own. Uh, and yeah, it it really kind of has me worried of like, okay, yeah, is this this might be another case of well, we'll just port it to the Switch because people will and buy another it. The problem but... is, is if it's four v one, does four people probably need to talk to each other? Yeah, the, like, and the Switch is not good for communication. No, like that's they're another not hurdle. The inf- they're yeah. not gonna have the app investment for this game. No, even though people don't want to use the app because no one has headphone jacks on their phone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's a huge other problem. It's not like Left 4 Dead, where it's like you need to talk to each other pretty much to win the game. Yeah, and it will not work on this kind of console. You're gonna, you're going through, you're gonna be like headless chickens running around trying to solve a problem. Yeah, like I think it has some type of like ping system in the game, but like, yeah, you know, if you, again, you basically a lot, ping- a lot, a lot of the game is like really working together. Like, okay, we need to find these pieces to put in this box that that then we have to take to this this gate. Like, I think it does need. Um, a lot of conversation, and you're right. Like Nintendo's online structure just isn't really built for anything more than just trying to matchmake. And sometimes matchmaking with your friends is like difficult to do. So, and sorry, this is a pink system from like years ago. Yeah, like I think it's modern games that yeah. have way better pink systems right yeah, now. Yeah, like I, I think it's nothing compared to like Axie. Uh, no, what's it called? Apex. Apex, Apex Legends. Legend. Yeah. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Which is but, yeah. modern and has an awesome way that you can play that game without having to team talk to anyone. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. can still have team interaction. This one here feels like I need to talk to my other three people players. Yeah. If not, it's gonna fall flat. Yeah, I and, I agree, and that's that's why it has me worried. But um, like if you are interested in playing, the game is slotted for when is it uh, for fall this year. So uh, let's move on to the next one. The next one is Toby Fox is at it again, bringing his highly anticipated and possibly overhyped next game to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Delta Room Chapter 1 will be released on February 28th, so two, about two weeks' time from now, and will be absolutely free. Um, following chapters are still in development and will be released at a later date for an unspecified price. However, if you're thinking of buying Undertale and we're on the fence, now is your chance to try out Fox's other games for free, which could maybe convince you to pick up Undertale. Um, you know it's um, they're the same letters mixed up. I forget what the name that's called. Oh really? Ah, Delta Rune. Delta is Rune. Ah. Just... See, this is what I was kind of uh, researching before, like um, whether or not it was a sequel to Undertale and like the. No, I don't think it's. A... Well, I mean, the dog is very. I think I never played Undertale. Yeah, but I'm See, pretty sure I... the dog has been both. Yeah. Yeah, the dog definitely is. Like, I I think there's a lot of crossover. Like, I was reading that there's lots of fan theories that the. I think they're based in the same world and like a lot of there's like a lot of Easter eggs in in Delta Rune that link to Undertale. Like I, I think I'm about I've played about half of Undertale um, and kind of got had enough of it after half of it. Uh, I was doing. But I uh, think it's a perfect Switch game. This is yeah. an indie game that's meant for a Switch, where I can take it where I want, play it how I want, and enjoy it. Yeah, and I think that that's what's great about it being the first chapter is like you can just play the. I think it's only probably about two hours long. It's like okay, I can play it in one sitting and put it down, and then 
be like, okay, that was a great experience. I can't wait for chapter two. I'll be like, okay, that was a good experience, but I don't want to try it again. So, um, yeah, I think it's cool that he's bringing it. I, I believe it's another like, uh, uh, like timed exclusive to the Switch. So nice to see the Switch getting some indie like exclusives with that. And, yeah, for and PC. But one yeah. Of our, yeah, yeah, it's already been out on PC for a while, I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's for been the consoles, since... it's the first one. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting take. And I think I was thinking earlier that the Switch is perfect for these episodic um, games. Yeah. So I'm assuming he's going to have chapters coming out. You know, after a while, I've just been playing yeah. like um, uh, some Telltale games recently, and we're like, yeah. these kind of games are perfect for a Switch. It's very easy controls. Is a story. I can get back yeah, to when you, I want. it's kind of kind of linear, I guess. It's like a linear game yeah. that has a start and an end, which a lot of games nowadays don't have, like because everything's open world and and open ended almost. Um, but yeah, I think another game that is like perfect for the Switch, and which I when I first saw it, originally thought it was developed for the Switch, is uh, Unravel 2. This is like another game, I guess you can kind of... The water's a bit murky on whether it's an indie game or not. Um, I it's... think it is an indie game, just because yeah. how EA markets it. Mm-hmm. And because we're talking about it, to put this in perspective, it had it won a DICE Award this year yeah. for the best family game, mm-hmm. if I'm correct. Um, I, was in, I played a bit of the first one. Yeah. Is unique. I think has a good idea to it. Yeah. Adding co-op into this world adds an interesting twist because it could, if you play purely co-op, or if you're mm-hmm. if you're playing with someone who's not a um, a, ga- a gamer yeah. per se. Let's say with like it's in your situation, right, where your girlfriend is not really a gamer who's mm. interested in games. You can have a there's a mechanic where they can like meld into you. Yeah, you so can you do can some just, of the puzzles, yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. can you can unmeld again and be two players. So it has yeah. a like very Mario uh, style where you're going into the bubble. Yeah, where you can one player can do the puzzle and the other player can just wait. Yeah, which I think is perfect for co-op because exactly it brings in other people into the game that are not mm-hmm. maybe gamers yeah. per se, like or yeah, invested and, and in, the, in in way. That's kind of why I thought because I think it was a lot. It was announced last year at EA Play, and yeah, like, exactly. It's, it EA seems so year. so tailored for the Nintendo Switch. Like both of the main characters are like the same color as the Switch Joy Cons, and like you said, ironically, yeah, if you yeah, got that, it, it got that Joy Con, yeah, 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 and uh, it was just like it was more of a surprise that it wasn't coming to the Switch when it was first released, and then it actually been released because I think every before it had leaked, and everyone was like, oh yeah, it's definitely coming because of how the the characters look, the colors. Uh, well, I mean, then, the red was always yeah, there Yanni beforehand. was always so. red, but then the neon blue, like it, it matched so perfectly. I but, mean, you um, it matched so perfectly, but also they're very contrasting colors. Yeah, true. And I think true. that's why they did it those colors. Um, yeah. I think because a, I'm sure the game was in development since Yarny One was done, which was bef- way before yeah. the well, Switch came out. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a. Per- I hope they bring bring. Uh, I would love to see a dual pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, both will come yeah that would be cool yeah i think Yar, um the first one will fit for the switch because it's a very it's a platformer yeah and because well nintendo's history it works well and it's a fun game it's an interesting game of like seeing the history of this family mm-hmm. um it has some unique uh game mechanics that we don't see yeah. in many other games it was a very i think undervalued game in terms of like a lot of people are not interested in it when it has yeah, its own unique ways of playing. Yeah, of... like it is. I think it is unique that it's the it's published by EA Origins, and when exactly. you kind of look at their their back catalog, like the, I think there's only like four games that they develop that, that they've published, but all I of them have been like really. The first one was the first. Unravel was, Gianni, was the first uh, one. Was Unravel, yeah, and then there was a way out. Um, then they then have that sorrow. The deep. Fear. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. They're, they're publishing that. I don't know when it's released, and then the other one was Fair. So like, they have had these like quite good smaller titles which are all kind of indie developed which is pretty cool yeah, but, I mean, yeah. that's one thing this is an indie game yes yeah. it's published by a huge conglomerate mm-hmm. but this is but it's made their by way a of small getting... yeah independent team yeah and this is why it started because of rocket league ea wanted yeah. to find their rocket league yeah um yeah. but yes these are just these are purely indie games all the money Again, because it's EA, if you feel like I don't want to buy this game because it's EA, 
Mm-hmm. All the money of EA Origins goes to the public, goes to the makers. Yeah. EA is taking none of your money if you buy Unravel 2 on Switch. It's mm-hmm. going to go to the people who made who made this game. Yeah. So just yeah. put a bit of a side note on this: is that if you don't like yeah, EA, it's not, it doesn't matter. It's not an this evil. Game yeah, is it's not, not going, an evil corporation that's selling you it. Yeah. This is going purely to the makers of it. So if you yeah. want more of this kind of platformer game. Put your buy it. It's a good game. I I'm interested in it. I haven't bought mm-hmm. it yet. Now I'm tempted to buy it on Switch because mm-hmm. I can play by myself on Metro. I can come home, my buddy's over, play a bit yeah. of it, continue the story, have a new one with him. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it has cool. an interesting way of playing and yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of like uh, what we said with Box Boy and Box Girl, right? Yeah, like, it was like it's like sh- share it's a like, Joy um, and scribble. Uh, shoot. Uh, snipper clips. Snipper clips, exactly right. It's a yeah. again, Switch is having a really good find of these multiplayer games mm-hmm. that fit well on their system. Yeah, like, that's uh, it. It's like I said, it's all accessibility and like couch co-op. Like just uh, having anyone who's there can play with you at any time, which I think I is really cool. Bring up one game that's a very awesome co-op game. Okay. It's on a Switch, Death Squared. Uh, Your two boxes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. From F, what is it? FGD or FDG yeah. Entertainment? Yeah, yeah. Again, again. Love multiplayer. Love playing with your your significant other, a friend. Mm-hmm. Support that company. Amazing games. Um, nice twist to it. It's on mobile too. Yeah, yeah. They're, SMG they're Studio. Great. Yeah. They're great. Oh, yeah, that's the SMG. I'm and it's of, just uh, a, a yeah. very good co-op game. Again, perfect for the Switch because this is what the Switch is meant for in terms of indie games. Well, not all, but that's if right. you want a party game, which is a lot of games that we saw in the Direct that's continue, I guess, on other mm-hmm. stories. I think we yeah. murdered, we unraveled, unraveled, so... Uh, yeah, and uh, just the last thing unraveled, it's coming up March 22nd, so it's quite close. So for, for the listeners at home, uh, what did you think of the indies that were shown during the Direct? Which ones are you going to pick up? And uh, what did you think on the Direct in general? Did it live up to the hype that everyone was expecting? Uh, did it uh, surpass the hype? Let us know over on Twitter at Switch Indie Fix or come and join the Switch Indie Fix Discord at switchindiefix.com forward join slash it, Discord. Join it, join so. It. <laughs> so nearly an hour into the podcast and we're just on story number two um Daft, uh, do you want to read out this new story i just want to say that the uh for my answer for that question is that this one surpassed mm-hmm. a lot of directs yeah. i think it would have been yeah. bigger than their e3 and if this is as yeah. big as it is i cannot wait for what their e3 is going to hit with because there's yeah, so many either. games we know is coming out you know zero mm-hmm. about yeah, and that's it. And that's why I like this one so much because I felt like there were so many games in this direct that we had no idea that were coming but are now coming. So, Daft, do you want to read story number two? Sure. Uh, I hope my writing's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hollow Knight 2 is announced. Unbelievably, not long after direct, Australian indie devs Team Cherry announced that their sequel to Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, Silk, Silk Song is coming to Nintendo Switch as a console exclusive at launch. The Silk Song was originally planned to be DLC for the, Hol- for the original Hollow Knight. However, the team behind the game felt like the DLC was getting away, f- uh, getting away from them as they added more features into what turned into an entirely new game. Feature Leak, if you're wondering what that's called. From the PR mm-hmm. of the dev state that Hollow Knight Silk Song is the epic sequel to Hollow Knight. The epic action adventure of bugs and heroes. As a lethal hunter hornet, journey to all new lands, discover new powers, battle vast hordes of bugs and beasts, and uncover ancient secrets tied to your nature and your past. Fans of the original will know that Hornet plays a huge part in the first game, both helping to hinder, helping hindering the protagonist in his journey. I think it's cool to learn a little bit more about her and all and I really want to go back to Hollow Knight and, they fin- and finally beat it. Those are Adam's so, yeah, words. That was me. I'm playing it yeah, right now. Yeah, that was now. me at the end, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with a friend right now because these kind of games are frustrating but amazing. Mm-hmm. I can do that later in this conversation. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the cliche is always, uh, you know, it's like a Dark Souls game. Yes, like I feel, and... feel like that kind of added to the, the success of Hollow Knight when it first came out on Steam and on PC. 
Um, are you excited for Silk Song? What was your experience with Hollow Knight on the Switch? Will Silk Song be did a day one buy for you? Um, to offer me is for my piss my history with Hollow Knight is I bought it on Switch, played it a bit, mm-hmm. got very confused because I didn't realize about the maps and all that. Yeah. So I was okay. very much lost. Bought it on PS4 with their whole DLCs. Been playing through that yeah. with my friend because for me I don't know why but the Switch for me is it's my console. It's my okay. precious. It's mine. <laughs> it's hard for me to play other games with other people on my on Switch. So like a okay. few other games like that I buy on other consoles and play with a friend. Mm-hmm. So I've been playing through Hollow Knight with a friend and I played through Hollow Knight, uh, Dark Souls 3 with him. Yeah. And now we're playing through this and it's a perfect game. If you have two people who love games who get very frustrated with like the difficulties of a Dark Souls-esque kind of game. Where you can yeah. learn off the other person playing and not getting this like butting your head against the same bad guy like hundreds mm-hmm. of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love the atmosphere of the game. The game, the the music. It's a really amazing game. I mm-hmm. highly recommend it if you like hard games. It's a beautiful world. Yeah, it's just stunning. Is the art style is like god, like gorgeous, and it's so unusual. And I think the obtuseness to it like only adds to it because it just makes you really want to know like okay well what is going on here like a lot again like dark souls and then as well yeah there is the the added like difficulty to it but i I don't think it's as difficult as dark souls like i always felt like a lot of it was kind of fair like the the checkpoints weren't too bad and like the 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 bosses weren't that hard but like i i I only played about four hours of it so i didn't get that far into it um (laughs) Yeah, um, I would say more what's making it difficult is like is the backtracking and knowing mm-hmm. where like oh yeah, I got this does. part I need to get something that's here. The yeah, whole map where system. Where to go next? Of, yeah, yeah. I need to find the guy who makes a map so know where I'm going in this area because a lot of times mm. I know where I need to go but I'm not exactly sure where I need to go. Yeah, um, I know what you mean. Like so it's always I, like I, I always loved hearing his little uh, the map guy's little humming noise. Mm-hmm. Like okay, good. I can I can. I can buy buy the map and be like, okay, now I can kind of check off where I've been, and it and it definitely helped. Yeah, and the bosses but, um, are unique. Um, yeah, the areas are very unique. I know who the Hornet is. You fight her. She's one of the earlier bosses. You, mm-hmm. you fight, but yeah. you don't defeat her in a way no. that you would say like is over. I think I think actually that's pretty much where I stopped was after beating her the first time, and then I kind of oh, she's the not the hardest. The Mantis is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. bosses are three of them, and it's it's a really beautiful game. The character's awesome. Yeah. Um, the abilities you get are unique, and you can switch them up and yeah. the way you want them to be switched up. So, one, mm-hmm. it helps you discover locations where it's like, okay, that's cool. If I'm going against a boss, let me switch up my abilities, make it more unique for this fight, and yeah. move on. And they have the same idea of, like, Dark Souls, where if you lose your souls, you're... Uh, I can't think of what her name in in Hollow Knight, but you're, yeah, you're, is it not not it's not clams, is it? It's like your soul. Yeah, what do you want to call souls in this either. game? But what, whatever the currency is, yeah, yeah whatever you go find and defeat you, your you ghost. You die and lose it, yeah. Your, yeah, which is really cool. Yeah, so yeah, and you turn around, just like oh, I'm you run up, pick up them up, and then I'm good to go. So it's like mm-hmm. it has an interesting twist. It's a very beautiful dark game. Um, they this came this company is I'm always invested in what they're gonna make. They're very much like the shovel yeah. knight of this of now. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a like a good kind of analogy of what they are, and I think it's only two guys that make it as well, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, exactly. I think it's because they want, they know what they're good at, and they want to continue. Yeah. This idea yeah. because they know that there are going to be people that's pop, and I think because this game is such a huge, um, again, it's a different character. And because of different characters, mm-hmm. I feel like why not just spur us into another game? People are invested yeah. into our into our universe. Why should it be a DLC when they kind of been selling Hollow Knight as a pure ga- full game for a while? With Void yeah. Breaker, I think it was called on PS4 and Marshall what it was called on P- on uh, Switch. Yeah. So it's like why not continue that. it? And because of a different hero, let's have a story. Maybe we can have all the DLCs, and their price points are yeah, pretty I- reasonable. Yeah. 
the first one was like fifteen. Exactly. So, so like, it was a lot cheaper than I thought it was going to be. So why not um, have this as another character? Because a new character, it makes sense to make this a hun- another mm-hmm. game instead of attaching it to the old one. Yeah, I I agree. I think it's um, like they've been releasing DLC pretty much since the game was first released, and like it in the kind of news cycle, like I feel like the DLC gets lost because it's like oh, it's another Hollow Knight DLC. Whereas now, where it's like, well, actually, no, we're making a a sequel and it was kind of a shock surprise announcement like it, it's drummed up so much more attention for the game and for the studio and i think that's and, like well deserved from from them and because i think they feel like they're big enough they didn't have to be part of the direct they could do it themselves and yeah people would be yeah. interested because again it's not a game for everybody so putting it into the direct no, it's definitely not it would have been like like a lot of direct games were a game where everyone could play like yeah there's not many of them that would be oh i you know i you know, I'm gonna. I don't care about this game. Yeah, yeah. I could see it maybe going into one of the indie highlight videos exactly. or that'd, that'd indie, be perfect. indie videos. But as a as a standalone direct, yeah, I think you're right. But yeah, I think uh, we're both really excited for it. Like I said, I'm de- I definitely want to go back, like set apart, like a couple of weeks. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna focus on Hollow Knight to beat it. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for Silk Song. So the final story for today is Dead Cells gets a big update, guaranteeing. 60 frames per second on Switch. And shortly after its release on the Switch, motion twin developers behind hind- behind indie hits da- uh, Dead Cells. Did I say Dark Cells a minute Maybe. ago? I think I did. Uh, behind indie hit Dead Cells had to apologize to fans for locking their experience of the game to 30 frames per second on the Nintendo Switch. Now, however, with the, with the new update, Motion Twin went back to the drawing board with their game engine and rebuilt the driver that runs graphics on the Switch to ensure that gameplay runs at a steady F, uh, 60 SPF. Um, SPFs, I mean. Plus, they added new gameplay features such as custom game support, which allows players to input custom seeds and uh, adjust the game's difficulty and balancing. Uh, so, yeah, we were just talking a little bit before the show that you're a, you're a big uh, Dead Cells fan and, and you had... St- some thoughts on these updates. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm a huge Dead Cells fan. I, oh. I think I put in around 40 to 50 hours of it onto mm-hmm. the Switch. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing yeah. game. You like those like roguelike games. There's a bit of Metroidvania into it. Not a big part, but yeah, there's a bit. It's a very fast-paced game. If you, The twist is the weapons you get in the game make it different. Uh, mm-hmm. You have to kind of change your game play style depending on what weapons you get. Yeah. So each unique play style is different. Like, for example, the only time I met to the final boss was the first time I beat the first boss. I mean, all the way through. Okay. But since then, I have not been able to get that far. Yeah. And I I, kind of feel like that's one of the problems with Dead Cells is that, like, like a lot of uh, of rogue like or rogue like games, like I feel like the best ones are always like you can make a successful run on whatever you you can get. Like if you can, if you know what what items mean and what you, how you can use them, and you have the skill that that you can get to the boss like every like nearly every time, like kind of like the Binding of Isaac, you know. Like some of the YouTubers I watch, every run they get to the final boss and beat the game. It doesn't matter what items. No, they I get. mean this. But one, I feel like with Dead Cells. Um... Um, uh, I would say no is a bit different because you do have okay. like in compared to Binding of Isaac, which is purely item based. This one mm-hmm. you do kind of have a level up system in it. Yeah, and yeah. And it depends on what you, you find, right. and it's... it depends on what weapons you have. It depends on what you want to put your investment into. Okay. So like you do have like survival, which is like uh you have like essentially attack. Um, tactical and health, and mm-hmm. depending on what items you use and what abilities you have, because you get both. Okay. And with the dead cells, yeah. so if you don't know, each when you play through a level, you collect dead cells, which is like one of your ways of leveling up. It's a way to unlock stuff. Mm-hmm. You go to the collector, you yeah. f- unlock weapons, ex- right. weapons, abilities, uh, passive okay. effects of um, holding more money when you restart a game. Uh, having more health, mm-hmm. um, starting with a random. So at the beginning, you start with a ran- a crappy weapon and crappy shield or bow. You're going to lock having a random yeah. weapon and bow or shield. Uh-huh. 
So essentially, any one that you have locked, you can find at the beginning of the game. So when I first played this game, for example, yeah. I unlocked everything, which is a big mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, because the pool of weapons is exactly. larger, so you get like the less chance of getting something good. Or get something oh, you okay. prefer, I would say. So yeah. like they do have this, yeah. the uh, the Sparta boot, and everyone knows what a Sparta boot does because I really watched three hundred. It kicks yeah. <laughs> a, a big but kick. I don't like that weapon, yeah. but I can find mm. it because I unlocked it. Right. Yeah. So uh, you need to find what your playstyle is and kind of unlock weapons that kind of fit it. Oh, so it has a different mechanic in terms of the weapons you like, you want to unlock. Then they have things called, um, mm-hmm. I can't think of the name of it, but it's a kind of a grenade, which you can huck at a enemy. They become uh, a yeah. legendary uh, epic enemy, I think it's called. Yeah, and yeah. then you can get uh, blueprints from them. Because the idea of unlocking weapons mm-hmm. is by coming getting blueprints. And okay. it's called the Hunter, the, the hunter, it's the, called the hunter they, Grenade. They just... So this allows you to get okay. more blueprints. So you can have playthroughs where okay. you go, I'm, I'm going for the boss. I'm going to try to run through, go towards the boss, or I'm going, to, or I'm going to get this hunter grenade and try to get more weapons, and diversify mm-hmm. my playthrough. So you can basically kind of gr- grind. You can you can kind of grind for blueprints exactly. if you wanted to. And there's like that, multiple that worlds. Item. Okay. Because it's kind of I say Metroidvania esque, is that you can run through the game in one way, or you can use different routes to go to different worlds. And only way you okay. get there is to getting unlocking um, powers. And these powers mm-hmm. kind of way I say is Metrovania because if you don't have that power, you can't get to that world. That level right, location. Okay. So yeah, and and you yeah. know the bad so guys are in those worlds, so you kind of be like, well, I have. If you unlock all your powers, and knowing your weapons, you're like, well, maybe this world is better for me because I'm not going against the big enemies. You know that. But I'm going against yeah. these smaller and yeah. more uh, multiple enemies. And mm-hmm. every time you feed, defeat a boss, they give you a legendary weapon, which is okay. like whatever your highest stat is. That's what it follows. Because normally ah, right. all okay. the other so weapons it, it follow you... a certain stat. So if you're better on brutality yeah. or tactical or survival, it follows. But the gold weapons are follow whatever your highest stat is. So you want to okay. be like, okay, I'm gonna go survival because I want the most health, and. I'm gonna use this yeah. weapon because it gives me it uses that power. Mm-hmm. So it was a cool idea. So, if you like the dark, like a roguelike game, I highly recommend this game. It's only probably like fifteen dollars or whatever. On this. it's not an expensive mm-hmm. game. It's very beautiful. If you like that 16, 16 bit kind of looking game, a game again like yeah. Dark Souls, which doesn't give you much information. The information you get from it is from look finding location and reading the text Just the environment yeah um yeah you can play it often it's a perfect switch game i'm it's a perfect because you can play anywhere you want it are quick sessions or long sessions mm-hmm. you can close the game go back to it you're back where you were it's the perfect game for a switch and it's one of my top indie cool. games on the switch right now and do you think like it being locked at 30 frames per second made any I difference? I played on like, PS4 I know... and Switch. I didn't really see a notice. I seen okay. sometimes a bit of a a lag, but nothing that yeah. was like, oh god, this is horrible. I think people who are complaining about yeah. it, I think this is a nice um, uh, feature. It's kind of like fan fan service, I guess, to those people. Because I, I guess the problem is, is like they promised it on Switch at 60, 60 frames per second, and then for whatever reason, because their engine couldn't work with the Switch's like software or hardware or whatever, like they couldn't deliver it. So I guess it kind of put the the, the devs on the back foot when when people were like, "Oh, well, you promised us sixty frames." Um, but yeah, I think like like you were, I think you were about to say it's like a, it's a nice feature to have, but I guess you probably didn't need it to no, enjoy I the mean, game. I noticed sometimes like, oof, this looks a bit. I played mainly the game on. Yeah. I played Dead Cells purely on handheld, on the Switch, and never put it on. I don't. Okay. Maybe a little bit, but nothing I can remember putting it on my TV, and if I had fun with it. Okay. I just hang by my computer, play Dead Cells, listen to music. And that was my jam. And nice. 
Sounds like the perfect life. I played life. 40, 50 hours on it. So, like, it was one of my most played yeah. games in 2018. And it was probably one of my top five games in 2015. 18, sorry. It uh, was... I cool. love that game. It's fun. It, the change of different weapons makes you want to play differently. Um, I played with my friend, mm-hmm. the same guy I played with the Dark Souls game where we take turns each level. It's a cool game to yeah. be like going back and forth and chilling and talking. It's I highly recommend it. I think it was one of the best indie games last year on the Switch. And I'm waiting cool. for a lot of these yeah, indie I games definitely... to come on the Switch. Like Slate Aspire is my next one. Yeah, me too. I can't wait for Slate Aspire. Yeah, and there's one more game I'm waiting for the Switch, and I can't wait for the end of this month. Come out on Switch. Uh, for Boom, a- yes. April? I already pre-purchased it. Yeah. Ah, it looks nice. awesome. I cannot wait for that game. It does. Yeah, I know. It was a shame it was delayed, but yeah. At least it's, it's not too long, too long and but... I understand that it's, it's Revolver. They're good at messaging. I'm Again, I am a game developer. I make games. I understand yeah. what's going on. Um, so I'm not saying yeah, I'm like, superior what, in any way. Is... I'm saying I under, like... As a game developer, in my own element, I know what's going on. I'm not mad at them. They had good messaging. No. Um, well, it's, it wasn't it like one of the... I can't remember who said it, but like it said like a, de- a delayed game is... Yeah, it's... Uh, like a, a, by de- basically, a delayed game can never be made worse by being yeah, delayed. Game, like yeah. Delayed games are always better than what they were going, going exactly. to be. So. I mean, what worse than what would happen would have been... Because it's also kind of in the spotlight, right? If it came out now, mm. it would been... Oof, yeah. there's some bugs. They don't buy this game. Yeah, yeah. And then no yeah. one would hear about the update. Yeah. And no one will know how good it got because of the update. Exactly. Because that's what yeah. happens with that's a lot it. of games, right? Is because they come out maybe a bit too rough. Mm-hmm. And because, you know... Yeah, like you said, they just come out too early. They're negative finished, news is better than not, good news. Uh, right? Yeah. So people are going to say, yeah. hey, look, this game is broken. But no one's going to say, hey, look, oh, this hey, game look, is it, fixed. Yeah. Because no one's going to yeah. click on that. Yeah. And that's sad. That's right? true. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're so, right. So, and you're because right. this game's kind of so, known, uh, it probably has some more reviews on some bigger sites. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, they can't afford to do that. No, they can't. And like like you say, every they only get one chance of like a, a release. And if, like you say, if the release is mired by the game not working properly and having bad reviews because of, of bugs and they've kind of lost all the, the momentum that they're going to get. But also because digital, they but, uh, don't need to go gold and start producing Yeah, that's discs, true. Right? They can afford this kind of delay yeah, two yeah. weeks because it, all mm-hmm. it is is yeah. when, do they put, when can people download it over when can they start making yeah. discs? Shipping yeah, the so day discs, one patches, you know, the, car- the cartridges, like, at I guess. least they can, yeah. be, they can afford to be like, hey, we're, we need two more weeks to fix these problems. We can submit the day before. We're all good. Yeah. Right? And that's essentially what yeah. follows. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Good. So I want to quickly go through some news tidbits because of the <laughs> we haven't finished in the U. So um, Limited Run have a physical copy of 90s nostalgia game Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove up for pre-order. Uh, the game comes with the physic. Uh, sorry, the bundle comes with the physical edition of the game, a puzzle, and six collectible, pit, collectible pins with a stand to mount them on. Uh, the bundle costs sixty nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and pre orders have uh, started yesterday. So if you wanted to co- wanted pre order a copy, you should head over to Limited Games website now. Um, up on Kickstarter, there's two kind of interesting looking Switch related items. Uh, the first is cinematic two D platformer Lunark. Um, Old card, yes. Yeah. It's heavily Sorry. He- heavily influenced by games like Flashback and the original Prince of Persia. Uh, if that sounds like your jam, look them up on Kickstarter under Canary Games. Um, it- Can I say one thing after this? Yeah, it's currently... Let me just f- finish, hang on. It's currently about 90, uh, 75% of the way f- funded and the campaign lasts until Feb 21st. What did you want to say? So I'm from Montreal. Okay. Uh, this developer is also from Montreal. Uh-huh. Oh, Montreal right. has a game, Demo Night. Yeah. I saw this game. I saw the trailer of this game. So more than what's in the in the the reel you can watch on Kickstarter. Yeah, it's a very beautiful game. Mm-hmm. It's high, if you like those old school sixteen bit kind of like adventure games. Yeah, I highly recommend backing it. It's only seventeen dollars Canadian. Mm-hmm. Um, for that price, I trust this company. Um, Montreal indie companies Oops. usually do a very good job. 
Yeah, there seems to be like a, to come out. a flourish of indie devs coming from Montreal at the minute. Yeah, I mean, Ultimate Chicken Horrors is one that came out recently. That's yeah. amazing. This one is it looks good. It's a one it's a one person developer. Really? So, oh, I didn't realize it was just one guy. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's one guy. It's it's maybe he has now will hire a few more, but yeah. I'm pretty sure at the beginning. It's a very beautiful game. The environment looks good. The music is sounds great. Mm-hmm. Um, again, not to put this, but people need like these kind of games need people's help. Yeah, it become to, to come to out. Exist. It won't come yeah. out be, for any other reason because it mean it needs something like Devol- Devolver to get invested into it. Yeah, yeah. If no. not, it needs people's interest. And this game looks really good. Uh, I backed it. I'm excited for it. It looks like a perfect game to put on the Switch. It's an old school game where you can go back to it and play what you want. Mm-hmm. Has a bit of a story. Yeah. A bit of an adventure. Um, so yeah. I highly recommend this one. Cool. And like I said, go to uh, Kickstarter and search for Canary Games to back it. So Canary the- with an I. Sorry. Canary with an I. Yeah. So that was our news section. And as always, section two is the conversation portion, even though I feel like we've had a very long conversation during the news. <laughs> um, and it is uh, what we've been playing this week. So um, I have played two games. I think, Darth, you've probably played one of the games uh, that I've been playing as well, because one of them was Tetris 99, which I guess oh, we, already, I, <laughs> we I, already spoke about. Yeah, I didn't really play much yet, but I no. mean, it's Tetris. Yeah, like... We've, I, I guess we don't need to speak about it that much because we talked about it at the start of the show, but I just think it's like, it's a great game. It's perfect for, uh, it's a perfect, like, just one more game kind of game. It's so easy to get into a game right now because everyone's playing it. Um, and yeah, it, it's Tetris. Everyone knows how to play Tetris, uh, but it has this cool, like, competitive aspect to it now, which I think is great. And I think it's also, like, we were kind of talking about the Nintendo Online, how it's not very portable. But yeah. because the games are so short, yeah. If I'm at a coffee shop and have Wi-Fi, I can't yeah, you play can just game. yeah, you can just get one game in quickly and then it's leave. It's like Fortnite, right? Where it's like I can go in, do a game, do and talk to anyone. Mm-hmm. I leave when I want to leave, right? Like it fits yeah. that mold. Yeah, so it does. We're talking about Dead Dead Light does not fit that mold. And yeah, yeah, you're right. It fits. Yeah. Uh, this week. For Switch games I've been playing, mm-hmm. it would be, I guess, Wargroove. I'm still on. Uh-huh. And, and what, do what do you sure think of what do you think of it? I've talked about it before. I've not I, I've not played it yet because I, I have there were so many games that have come out the last like two weeks and I actually like kind of luckily I got like review codes for every everything I wanted apart from Wargroove. Wargroove was the only one I couldn't get, so I've been kind of like trying to like dig my way through all the, the backlog I've had in in february but uh yeah tell me about world groove what do you think about it i think it's a, it's a phenomenal game yeah it adds less stress of uh, say like the fire emblem games mm-hmm. because you don't really care as much of losing a unit yeah is, is it permadeath or so you, or... okay so how the game works is you have one captain okay you have like your in most games you have your leader um if you lose your leader you lose that scrimmage okay um, you can either the win by defeating the leader, or if they they have like a um, a building that's their stronghold. Okay. And you defeat that building, you win. Okay, right. So there's two ways of winning. Usually in the games, I I'm not that far, so the wins I played, that's how you win. Right. Um, you have barracks in the game where you can create more units. Mm-hmm. And the biggest twist from this game, from let's say like Advanced Wars, which I would say is the closest. Yeah, like I think it's Good a idea. spiritual su- successor, exactly. right? It, you have yeah. a critical hit system. Okay. So for each unit, so for example, if you have spearmen, if you have two spearmen next to each other, they can critically hit the other player. Right. If you have a uh, even archer, if you don't move, mm-hmm. that turn you have a critical hit. Your swordsman critically hit if they're next to your captain. Right. Okay. So it's all about and like you, placement of of exactly, the, the and the captain's like the most powerful one. You can, yeah. you can uh, capture buildings. And okay. the cool thing about the buildings is they have a health bar. Yeah. And if your unit is weak, you can gain health from your buildings. Right. Okay. So you, the building loses, let's say, like half your health, but you gain it. Right. Uh-huh. So it's a cool way okay. of, like, I'm a bit weak. Let me reinforce mm-hmm. this turn. 
to become more strong, like stronger in the battle. Yeah. It's just a very good um, game that and, you can play solo, have a campaign, and also yeah. if you want to play multiplayer, you can you can create yeah. your own levels. Mm-hmm. It fits yeah, I've seen well some on really the... cool ones online of people creating like advanced war levels. And, exactly, and... it's a very yeah. awesome Switch game because, as we were talking about early in this podcast, it has multi facets to it. Yeah, that work perfectly well with the Switch, and you and can do what, play what, wherever you want. One, one thing I've kind of been thinking, like as I've been seeing a lot, a lot of it on Twitter, is like, how would you describe the combat? Would you describe it more as like it's like a turn-based like RPG, like along like Final Fantasy VII kind of like where you you're scrolling through a menu and a, and choosing your moves to make, or is it more like um, more like Banner Saga, like where you because you, you're saying about the, the the troops need to be positioned in a certain way to have a critical it's hit chance. It's pure tactics. Okay. If you've played okay. any kind of Fire Emblem tactics, Fire Emblem, sorry. Final Fantasy Tactics or Fire Emblem yeah. games, purely like that. Okay. Is okay. I'm not moving this turn. I'm going to attack this player. I click on the player attack. Yeah. For nurture, that's a critical hit. Okay. It's purely tactics. You don't have, you just don't have other powers. There's one attack. Right. Depending okay. on what you do, where you are positioned that turn. Yeah. That that affects give you a critical, the damage. Critical yeah. damage. Okay. But it's purely like if you like tactics tactics games. Either mm-hmm. Fire Final Fantasy Tactics or Advanced Wars or Fire Emblem, this is yeah. a game for you. It's and and I, like, I, have stop. you found it difficult to play? Like, like um, the, 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 there are some the level difficult levels for sure. Yeah, yeah, different okay. twists. There's a story behind it, so the campaign will have stories. It's like uh, you may be leaving your city, so that story is you're trying to take your citizens out of the city. Okay. So they have like carts. You yeah. have to bring to the cart, bring to bring citizen, bring them out. You're trying to protect them from the invading force. Mm-hmm. There's different. Um, there's there's a few different countries with different. Yeah, there's uh, fallout, abilities. I think. Yeah, the units are very similar, mm-hmm. so you understand what's going on. There's no learning curve of using different country. You know yeah. what the units are, but you the captain, what, yeah. the captains, you been more unique. Okay, cool. So it's a it's a very fun game. Again, perfect for the. The only problem I find is that some of the games last a bit too long, and there's no right. save points. Okay. So if you so know you're you losing of... the game, you're like, well, sh- I need to go back to the beginning. Okay. And I think I've read a lot of reviews of like this problem, and it's not a big one. It just made me been more frustrating. The AI yeah, it's... are pretty good. Okay. They're not dummies. Right. And you kind of so you know maybe just... three quarters of the way through if you're gonna win it or lose it. Mm-hmm. And then if you have to play last quarter out just because you need to end the game to restart. Yeah, that, I guess that's points. frustrating. You, you feel like you're wasting your time if you're exactly. fighting a losing battle. And there's no save point. I mean, again, save point is a bit of a cop-out because you want to save yeah. constantly. Yeah. But, it, yeah, it does not get a bit frustrating when you're like, well, I know I lost. I put 40, out, more than 40 minutes into it. Mm. Yeah, right. that is a long time. Yeah, especially if you lose and have to do it again. Yeah, so I think but that's no, the only it's... downside to it. Okay. Again, there's so many good games like this on the Switch right now with this and with... Um, is it... uh, why am I forgetting the name? With what? Tiny one... Metal? No, 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 no. Sorry. I'm, I'm, it's, I, um, uh, the guys who made uh, Bleep in Hell, um, the, the mech one against the bugs. Oh, uh, yeah. Into the Breach. Yes, yeah, thank you. The, the FTL guys or whatever. Yes, yeah, exactly. FTL, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Very much... Similar because they have similar mechanics of you moving, attacking. Yeah. It fits that idea. Just has a bit more, maybe more, more expansive, mm. a bit bigger worlds. Yeah. Because I think a bit more of a story maybe into as the well. Breaches nine by nine. Or yeah. Twelve by twelve maps. This is way bigger. Okay. But it has the same cool. idea of you just choosing where to attack. Cool. So it's yeah, a very it's, good like game. I said, it, it's 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 a game that I, I've been wanting to play. I just haven't had time to to play it because, uh, yeah, I had so much more to play. Well, this um, is a, it's a very but, meaty. But, it's a very meaty in the game. Yeah, and that, that's it. And I, I feel like it's a game you you kind of have to dedicate a lot of time to to like learn it and and get good at it. And like you say, if if there is like a consequence of you playing like a battle for 40 minutes and then losing like i guess you want to make sure okay i'm winning every battle yeah i mean there's been there's some battles are long because it's because you have a barracks and you're constantly making units mm-hmm. 
you have to figure out how much money you get and what UCA makes is what they're making. So it gets a bit long yeah. to like processing the whole battle. Yeah. Yeah, it's a game like I, I'm definitely going to pick it up. Like I, I just want to say I've been playing um, this week Evil Land, the Legendary Edition. I've and, heard uh, of Evil it's Land, quite... but... It's 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 good. Like it's it's a bundle. It's a bundle. It, it, the the code was supplied to me by the the developer, so the people that are listening should take that take my opinions with a grain of salt. But yeah, it's a bundle of Evil Land One and Two. Um, Evil Land One is kind of feels like a very. It's just like a proof of concept game where the the devs had an idea like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we have a game where you kind of travel through video game history. So like at the start of the game, you start off and you're playing in like the graphics are just like Game Boy kind of oh, okay. graphics, so it's like, like the where it's like green of the graphics, I guess. Exactly, yeah. Well, it's of everything. So you start off and it's just your little sprite, and there's two chests, and basically all you can do is move left or right. So you move to the first chest, and it um, unlocks like um, like visual scrolling. So then the screen gets bigger and it's like, now it's like a square screen from the Game Boy. And then you walk to the next chest and it's like, oh, you unlock uh, like music. And it's like these old kind of like uh, retro kind of chip music uh, playing. And then as you you kind of progress through the game and the idea is you, you're basically just look, looking for chests to unlock these new parts of the game. And it's like you go from like Game Boy into like eight eight bit graphics, and then you go to sixteen bit, and then you go to like, and it's like literally every aspect of the game is unlock. It's like an unlockable, so it's even like menus get unlocked, like um, like inventories get unlocked, like pretty much any any video game staple is kind of you have to find it in the game to unlock it to access it, like. Um, you pretty much play for like it's really short like i beat it in two hours and that's why i kind of feel like it's a, a bit of a proof of concept like it's like oh okay it kind of feels a bit like a student game like oh this is a cool idea we had let's make it into like a a thing to show someone um but yeah like i think it's it, it's it's really unique like it's 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 uh, the story kind of is like a final fantasy story but it's like just condensed down to these two two hours where it's really like okay here's here's this bad guy he's bad go and defeat him and that's pretty much all you do but along the way it's kind of nice to be like oh i wonder what it's going to be in this in this chest to unlock like there's and it, it kind of switches up the gameplay like it starts off like um at the beginning very much like a zelda game like a 2d zelda game um and then it switches up to being like a an RP, a turn-based rpg so it's like uh very like final fantasy 7 like inspired and then there's a bit where it turns into like diablo like an action rpg and you're like just beating up waves and waves of enemies like uh it is yeah it's it's cool like it has a lot of charm it's very surprising and um yeah it it, it was quite short which i i liked but it does kind of feel very bare bare bones in a way because it is really just about this one core con like gimmick like it's just a gimmick like oh the, the gimmick is you're unlocking slowly um you know the, the video game history or video game mechanics I mean, yeah, uh, it sounds interesting, and I think being two hours is a perfect fit. Yeah. And because you get both of them in this bundle, it makes sense. Yeah. Because you won't yeah. notice how much for one, because I'm pretty sure it's probably no. an older game. Like, and, yeah, I think 2012 it came out. And it sounds exactly, it sounds very much like, oh, let's start with a Mario game. You're going to get something that's bad. Mm. Bowser. You are. Yeah, like, like, there is a story, but it is really just like. You're the you're a male protagonist. You meet like a female protagonist. You travel together and find out that basically the world is ending or or is corrupt, and this guy is the cause of that corruption. So you have to go and defeat him. And then once you defeat him, that's the end of the game. Exactly. So be cool to see what they do with the second one. Well, this is what I want to speak talk about because I played. I started playing the second one, and like it actually feels at, like its own game. Like they were like, okay, I think Evil and the original one did quite well so they must have got some funds and like okay what we can actually make the game that we want to make now and it's uh yeah it has a much more fleshed out story where like a group of friends are basically transported through time so you're playing on the same map but in different periods of time and the way they kind of represent time changing is is through the graphical style so the present time is like 16 bit the past is 8 8 bit and the future is like HD graphics so it's kind of like really cool to kind of wander around the same areas and see how like because most of the game is based in like a city 
and it's cool to see how they the the city kind of looks in in HD and then back in 16 bit and then back in 8 bit um uh yeah which i think is really cool but again like i feel like it's lost a li little bit of its charm now because it, it's called evo land and you expect it to still have like this mechanic of like okay you you you're seeing like the evolution of gaming and i guess you are with the art style changing but it to me right now it just feels like a gen like any generic rpg like you know any any kind of indie rpg that is on the on the switch eShop, it's like yeah you know it's just it has like an interesting story and i'm enjoying it and it looks nice but i'm like it doesn't feel like an ev what evil land should feel after playing the first game and then playing this one straight after like i'm every time i'm in a chest i'm like oh what 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 am i going to unlock but it, it is just like oh well here's like an item like there's no kind of actual gimmick. um yeah there's no gimmick like the, the the thing that made the first game really successful has has gone now which i i kind of feel is a little bit sad because it would have been nice to have like a, a a more fleshed out story a more fleshed out game but still have like this gimmick but the thing is is like it's actually surprisingly really long like i, I thought it was only going to be about five hours long and i'm at five hours now and I, I googled like how long to beat it on uh on how long to beat com, and they said it's like an 18 hour long game so you know it might open up a bit more and add a, a add a few more like bring back some of the gimmick but right now i kind of feel like ah uh, you know yeah, it it feels like it doesn't feel like it's an e evil land game. It just feels like here's a here's a generic RPG game. Which is kind of weird because I'm on pretty much every console and phone possible. Yeah. So be the long seems a bit weird for let's say like an Android or iPhone. Yeah, like it's it's a lot like it's I I don't know how like exactly how long like how long to beat it is not always precise but if it's saying eighteen hours like it's gonna be at least fifteen hours to to play through so it's a long game like um and I am enjoying it I just like I said it just feels it just feels a bit too generic really whereas the other one felt felt so unique but was kind of missing that missing the game part of it whereas this now feels like a game that's missing the unique part of of it if you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, it's losing its identity. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The first one it's, lost it, 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 you're right. it was short, it was a here's a prototype. And the yeah. second was here's a story, but we lost what we need the first one popular and yeah, what do you yeah, want exactly from it? what made it special. Because it, again yeah. there's so many games like it. Why Yeah, exactly. This one? That's it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to find out more and and like I'm, I want to beat it and review it. Like uh, overall, I think the, the 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 like bundle is good. Like with one and two, especially if two does last fifteen hours, I think it, the asking price is fourteen ninety nine for the bundle. So I'm like, yeah, you know, if I get fifteen hours Evo, fifteen hours out of Evil and two and two hours out of the first game, like I think it, it's worth it. Like I don't always necessarily add a like an, an hourly rate to if a game is good or not or if a game's worth buying it but you know if if both games were only two hours long i'd be like well, you know yeah fifteen dollars I mean, is maybe a bit too expensive yeah for sure i mean again it depends on what comes in the game but it, if high yeah. time the first one's very much more like a prototype mm. you don't really want to invest like, too much in that one no no at least like i remember i i, I played evil and the first one way back on steam like i I think i got it on a steam sale for like two two pounds or yeah. something and that kind of feels like okay maybe that's how much it should be retailing for if it was standalone but um yeah in this title they in this bundle they get away with charging a bit more with uh the the second game which yeah is a bit well, more I think substantial it came out last year. oh no it came out in 2015 originally yeah so yeah it's four years old so it's 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 also getting on like I, I I don't know like I think it's cool that they brought it to Switch like I guess they're working on the next title and uh, bringing stuff over to Switch is just like I guess like cash in the bank right now so uh, yeah ho hopefully if you if you buy it and enjoy it and it helps them make whatever they want to make next yeah because chosen people are interested in it right yeah exactly yeah and they're selling stuff so they're making money. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk um, about? I thought there was another game Nothing. in the direct that was also in the. I may be totally wrong. Uh, RuneScape. Rune Factory. 
Ah, yeah. Like, I don't, yeah, I guess it was indie, but I just have no idea what it's about. Do you know anything well, about it? Well, it seems like very much like a farming kind of game. It's just that it's big it, that announcing the fifth one. Was that, is that like the, the yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's like the really Japanese looking yeah, one. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I, like I said, I know nothing about it. That's quite kind of Sorry, why I didn't I just uh, feel like it's put it in. Kind like, of, I'm sure it's in people's radars. I'm sure there's a following yeah. in it. Yeah, I kind of heard on uh, kind of funny yeah. games daily today yeah. that um, you know they were they were they were saying like oh the the announcement of Rune what's it called RuneScape Rune Factory. no Rune Factory Fat Rune Factory Five is like someone's Gatorade get hype moment and there was people writing into the show today saying like oh yeah I was so pumped when when they said it and I guess that's cool like if you know for those people but um, but yeah yeah it's. Uh, I kind of assumed it was like put in there for the Japanese audience because like, I, I don't know, it's the fourth game in the series and like I'd never heard of it. But it's also nice that, Which is, you know, the fourth one's coming is like, you know, there's going to be a fifth one coming out. We're not just porting yeah. this game because we want to, it's we want to port this game because we want to get another more and bigger audience on it because we do have another one coming. Yeah, yeah, I think that's cool. And it's always nice to see new games coming to the Switch. So, like, you know, if if the fourth one does well, then maybe they part all the other ones as well. Like the, the one, two, and yeah, three. Yeah, exactly. And then the fifth, with the fifth one, maybe, like, in a bundle. But, yeah, cool. So, uh, this is just a little section break, just to remind you that this podcast is brought to you by switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord. If you want to join the conversation and talk about all things indie on the Nintendo Switch, come over and join the Switch Indie Fix Discord. Which actually brings us to our final section for today, which is our question section. Uh, we have one, two, three, four questions um, today. The first one comes from Scrabble Plays uh, via Twitter. Scrabble is a YouTuber and um, his content is based around uh, um, Switch content. He does a lot. He's been playing through Monster Boy and uh, he did a stream of Wonder Boy the other day, which was really cool. And, uh, and Wonder Song. So if you want some more um, variety to your Switch content creators, make sure you check out Scrabbles. Uh, he asks a very simple question: Do you think we'll get an other, another indie direct soon? Uh, Daff, what do you I think? I think that's a bit of a hard one because Nintendo seems to like separate their indie talk in the directs between mm-hmm. areas, right? Because you have the yeah. indie highlights, if I'm correct, right? And yeah, you have yeah. In, North, in, in Europe, it, in North America, we have the Indies. So yeah. it's and Japan, they have Indie. Yeah, World, so it's. I, think I it mean, is. I think we'll see another one soon from a different area because you guys had yours mm-hmm. in January. We have not yeah. had one yet. Yeah, I think the next one will be an Indie yeah. one because I think Japan had one not so long ago as well. Hello. Yeah, you can just cut out for one second. Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah no worries. So I think we'll see yeah. one maybe in the next month or so. I'm not sure. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm assuming March will be the cutoff. Because yeah. if you have it in May, it could get in too much into E3. Yeah. I'm assuming yeah, we think... have one, but promise we know about the kind of indie games that are coming out in the next few months with mm. Ape Out and mm. stuff. Yeah, like that's that's what I mean. Like I feel like you know January is usually January and February were traditionally always like the slow period of the year, but this year there just seems to have been so many indie games coming out that like I kind of feel like now I'm like well when I look at 2019 there's nothing really I I can think of off the top of my head like oh which like a big indie game that's what? coming. What so is dates right? Um, like that we mentioned earlier in the show, um, Slate Aspire. Yeah, there's, waiting for dates. Yeah, like Slate Aspire, but yeah, it's like but like I mean. Yeah, we don't have like solid dates to be like, okay, Slay the Spy is coming in July. Oh, like, there's no, that's what I mean. Okay. Like, we don't know. We don't know when it's coming. I think it's just said 2019 so far. Yeah. But um, I think, I don't know. Like, I think we're getting into that stage now where a lot of the big indies are already ported onto the Switch. And from going forward now, I think it is going to be a lot of like indie devs are, are debuting their, their games via. Um, like Nindy Directs or Indie Highlight Directs because I think at the start a lot of people were like kind of on the fence like okay 
is is the Switch going to be the savior for Nintendo, like, or is it going to be another Wii U? And like, luckily, it's be, uh, like a lot to do with indies. Like, it, it is it has become mega successful, so a lot of indie games are like like we've seen with the news, like bringing their games first to the Switch. So I think what's quite exciting is going forward in the future, we're going to see a lot of like indies being debuted via via a direct instead of just being like, oh, here's a part of this game that you know from Steam. It's going to be like, oh well, this. This developer that made this game on Steam is now making a new game, and it's coming first to Nintendo Switch. I mean, for sure. I mean, we'll see a lot. I think there will be one. Um, Nintendo's very famously tells you very quickly when there's going to be one the next day. So we won't mm-hmm. have, I think, a word on this until it happens. As I said, if it doesn't happen by end yeah. of March, I don't see it happening in April. It could happen in April because there's still May. I actually don't think about it, but yeah. March, yeah. April, if you have one, it'll be around then um, to mm-hmm. kind of say, hey, look, these are the big games coming up because I think they, oh no, I think they have their around GDC, if I'm correct. I think last year was GDC. He... Yeah, and then the yeah. event. So yeah, I expect run around, around March because that's when mm-hmm. GDC hits. Yeah, because I, I feel like this year, this year, May is going to be like a Pokemon one. Oh month. yeah, well, if it's I not, can see it happening nothing... earlier. Because I know Treehouse is doing stuff oh, really? okay. around Pokemon Day in the end of February. Yeah, on Pokemon Day. In the end of February, yeah. beginning of March, okay. there's stuff going on there. Um, GDC, I think last year is when they had their last, uh, their first Nindy Direct of last year. So I see around mm-hmm. the GDC period, we'll get a Nindy Direct. Because I think that okay. they have the mega booth yeah. there of all the indie games. And Nintendo wants to highlight mm-hmm. um, their game. I think that's when Bomber Chicken was announced. And stuff last year, so I th- yeah. I figured that's when we'll hear we'll hear one. Cool. Yeah, I I agree. I think we'll definitely get one before E three. So the next question comes from Jamie, and he says um, February has been a busy month for indie games on the Switch. What's been the best indie game you've played so far? Mine's been Wargroove. Do you agree with for yours? Wargroove's been the your favorite so game so far. Of February? I mean, there's still one game in February I'm waiting for, which is Ape Out. And yeah, it's still in February. Yeah, that's it. I... Um, War Groove, I think, and has Delta been very as well. promoted. And again, because of Advance Wars, everyone was excited for it. Um, there yeah. was a one game uh, which I've been playing. I think we, ta- we mentioned the one with multiple different styles. Um, uh, which one? No. The Evil Land? Um, you're playing as one. It's the. Oh man, I can't think of the name now. Sorry. Um, uh, strikes again, uh, Thomas uh, Trevor. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no more heroes. Yes, that yeah. one. Yeah, what's he? Travis. Travis that strikes again. That one kind yeah. of was talked about before it launched. Mm. When it launched, it felt like it kind of fell flat. Yeah, I, I feel like. The, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I feel like there was there was a, like a build up to it, and then it kind of released and was seemed to be a, a kind of a bit meh. And then since it's then, it's not my kind of game. Yeah, not so. I wasn't really following it. I'm not much into a kind of actiony. Kind no, of me game. neither. So to be honest, a new platinum game. Like, it's cool. Not my thing. Mm. Hope it's good. You know. Um, yeah. But I think War Group just yeah. hits a chord with a lot of old Nintendo fans. Who've been wanting Fire Emblem to die yeah. because they like Advance Wars better? Because um, <laughs> they're tired of seeing Fire Emblem characters in Smash. Yeah, well, we know what our next DLC is going to be now with our no, with I'm the new Fire Emblem. No, I'm thinking it's going to be. Uh, um, uh, oh shoot! What uh, Dragon Quest? It's going to be Dragon Quest, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, too I, bloody yeah. Long I think so too, the, actually. The next one, which was yeah, which yeah, was yeah. Uh, Dragon Quest Eleven for me was. You do not have to spend 20 yeah. minutes. Like, it's going to be talking about Fire Emblem. No, it's not. It's going to be talking about Dragon Quest. Because between Dragon Quest yeah. Builders and that yeah. one. Well, that's it. I'm not getting into it, but it was like, this yeah. is an old... Between between Dragon Quest and Fire Emblem, it was like the majority it, of the, well, well, the direct. Fi- like, uh, I felt like they could have shared... Dragon an old game, right? Like, you're adding nice twists mm-hmm. to it, but you do not have to go into what the game yeah. is. Go into what you're bringing no, into it. What, yeah, what it. The, but it's got a, a story or whatever. And then yeah, it was too I long. I agree. And it got me more disinterested into it than like, oh, cool, it's coming. Because I was kind mm-hmm. of waiting for it to come to the Switch to play it. And I didn't need a yeah, long spiel but, of why. 
Yeah. I, to be honest, the the Dragon Quest part of the Direct just kind of convinced me to buy it on PlayStation exactly. when it goes on sale. I'm not going to pay full price for his game on Switch. Yes, no, it's not the 18-bit no, stuff, but again, I never played the old one, so the retro version of it doesn't really matter to me. Mm. But again, yes, more... Yeah, me neither. Like, uh, to be honest, the, the more content that they're adding to it is kind of putting me off playing it. I'm like, okay, it seems like it's going to be long enough. I don't need to play it, have extra stuff to, to do in it. But yeah, I think... Um... We're good for sure at the moment is the biggest February launch on indie game of this month mm-hmm. because of the nostalgia it hits. Um, yeah. A plus it looks cool, interesting. And it, I guess, yeah. My mine to be honest has been um, Reverie Sweet Earth Edition. Like it's a game I have played before. It, it was originally like they're actually the, the devs rain back. They're like kind of funny best friends, and I think I found out about it uh, through like Greg Miller. <clears throat> because he originally released it first on the Vita. I played it on Vita uh, whilst I was on holiday and loved it. And then they announced it was coming to the Switch. So I've been kind of following it there. And like, it's such like a, it's again, it's quite like a small game, but it's just so fun to play through. And it's just like what you want out of like an action adventure game. Like everything, like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything new, but the stuff it does from the past, it does really well. And it looks really great, and like the the writing's really good. Like it's really funny. It's 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 basically, it's like a Zelda game that looks like Mother Free, but is set in New Zealand. So like the characters are, are like really awesome and funny and unique, and um, you know yeah, it has the like Mother Free tropes where instead of having a baseball bat, or well, I should say the Mother fran- franchise, instead of having a baseball bat, you have a cricket bat, and uh, yeah, it's just like a. a cool indie game to just sit down with and play on an afternoon and and enjoy Did you play the old uh earthbound games no i've i've never played them i i actually just read the first book in the boss battle oh, awesome. uh series which is about earthbound which um like to be honest I, I didn't really enjoy the book that much but like i'm kind of sold on playing it so i'm i'm kind of thinking like okay when it's if it ever comes to the switch like i'm definitely gonna download it and play it and i've been playing uh y2k a postmodern rpg which is like also like very heavily influenced by earthbound so i kind of feel like i've been getting getting a lot of like quasi earthbound games at recently uh but I, no i've never yeah, played I the mean, original one. i never really played them so they don't really interest me as much um they look cool uh i have so many games i'm playing right now yeah. they kind of are not that interesting and there's more games I know on Horizon. Mm. Yeah, that some I'm some. In. Yeah, sometimes it, like it's 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 hard to justify playing an old game when there's so many good new I mean, ones. I mean, I love indie play. games. I will take time in on them, like the Hollow Knight, the Dead Cells. But there's so many other mm-hmm. games like this one. It's like for me, I'm waiting for it. Like, Stay Inspire, um, Super Meat Boy Forever. Yeah. Uh, Ape Out. Yeah. That. Yeah, there's a lot to a lot to exactly to, to play. I mean, I'm sure they're good games, and, and if you like those games, I'm sure yeah. people are gonna love them. Uh, I'm not taking it away. I'm not detracting yeah. from these kind of games whatsoever. It's just that um, no. these kind of RPG small games. Um, I like lore a lot, mm. and I'm gonna more invested yeah. to say that the uh, Dragon Ages, the Dark Souls, were have heavy in the lore. Yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah, it seems to be how games are going now. Like in the back in the day, with like storytelling was literally delivered through like in-game dialogue, whereas now it seems to be much more about like uh, the, the atmosphere and and like the yeah, like and just stuff like it passively tell telling you a story, like instead of it being it in your face. Multiple gameplays, right? Like, yeah. like the Bioshock. Right, I can play through that game yeah. and not care yeah, yeah. and have fun because it's a bit of a shooter. It's a bit of there's a bit mm. of puzzles and stuff, or I can spend my time finding all the yeah. records and listening to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's an option there for if exactly. you want to Dark Souls, all those kind of games. It's like I want it, I can find. If not, it doesn't detract. Yeah, you can just enjoy the combat. Yeah, yeah. So let's move on to the final final question. I'm actually going to cut one question. So the last question this week comes from Switch Underground, and it's quite a long one, so bear with us. Uh, so he says, 
So I've been championing slash starting the hashtag, hashtag switch bed buy. Uh, these are games that we were not, that were not day one insta buys, but caught your attention enough that you subconsciously put a sale price on it. Usually that sale price is one you see in bed scrolling Reddit or Twitter. In your sleepy state, you just hit the button. These are usually indie titles, heavily discounted and sit in the backlog for a long time, never played or get 30, or you get 30 minutes. Um, once in a while you get a rare gem that grips you, so my question is what may, motivates this digital sale collecting of indie titles? Uh, I have found this behaviour to be fairly common and one look at r slash Nintendo Switch sale deals or even normal discourse everywhere illuminates this behaviour. Uh, it's quite funny because this actually um, happened to me today. Uh, because of the directs, I kind of uh, saw all of the DLC that was coming for the new Starlink, for Starlink Battle yeah. of Atlas or whatever it's called. And I was like, you know what? Today I'm I'm going to go out and if I see Starlink for 25 euros, I'm going to buy it. And I actually ended up spending money on a new rucksack. Like, So I kind of put myself, I, I didn't buy it again, but I did see it for that price. And I was like, okay, yeah, if, if I hadn't just bought this expensive rucksack, then I would have I would have bought the game. And I'm... Um, yeah, just uh, quickly, Darth, if you want to kind of give your opinion, because uh, my is, my computer is blaring at me, but my disk space is uh, almost full. For, for me, which is not good. Um, it went in, it's not really the price, because again, me being in the industry, I wanted to support other companies. Mm -hmm. So I don't really mind giving them yeah. full price. Um, for me, what catches yeah. my attention is usually the gameplay. Uh, what I've heard of it is a lot of, like Dead Cells and all those kind of games. Is like I heard good things about it on the PC. I don't really want to play it on that. I'll wait for it to come out on this console. Yeah. And if Nintendo has a pre-orders bonus, is awesome. Um, I understand what is you the idea yeah. of it. Um, again, it depends on what the game is and how long you think I'm going to get invested into that game. Right? Like Starlink yeah. doesn't really interest me. I uh, all. I'll mm -hmm. wait for it to go down on deep cuts if I want to buy it. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. Like originally, I, I thought it was a cool looking game, but I was like, yeah, you know, I don't have the time to play it. I'm never gonna play through the entire story. But um, like, yeah, like now I'm kind of if if uh, yeah, if it's cheap enough, then I would pick it up and probably play it and probably still not finish it. But I'd still have that feeling of like. Okay, well, I didn't pay 60, 60 euros for this. I only yeah, played so 25. Like, I'd rather wait for a next Star Fox pure game over this. And it feels mm. like... Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, it was to say, like, marry uh, Ubisoft's uh, uh, King, um, Kingdom Battles, right? We were getting other Mario games. Yeah. So it wasn't like this is detracting mm. from... Mario, this is, feels kind of like it's attracting from Star Fox. Right? Yeah. Because there has not been a true, yeah, a very good I, I Star think Fox team in a very long time. No, no, not since like the N64. But I think as well, it's like, it's just the age we live in. Is is There's been a, already a few, like Wargroove was one of them, but I was so excited to play it. And then I just got to the point where it was released and I was just had so much, uh, so many other games I had to play that I just never bought it. And now I'm kind of like, well, the hype for Wargroove is kind of past and the next game's coming up. So I, I probably won't pick it up, but then I'll see it on sale for like 20% off. And I'm like, oh, well, now I should buy it because it's But again, it's we're coming from cheaper. different angles on this, right? I mean, yeah, you're coming I, from I a point of... Yeah, like I know what you're me, saying I, about... I don't have a public presence, right? I can play whatever I want. Mm. For you is you want to try to catch... Yeah the game's coming out what's, right what's and if like, you miss it it yeah, kind of exactly. goes down in your backlog to it's you gone play yeah. personally over you wanting to play yeah. for an audience right yeah so in terms of yeah that's it it's like not, now now i feel like every game i play i have to play it from a review and if right. not then so i'm like, kind of wasting my time there's eight coming you know out I mean. at the end of the month where if you get that on day one and love it, yeah, you can talk about it, right? Yeah. And the problem with Wargroove really is that, as we were saying earlier, about big companies picking it up, that was one of them. Mm -hmm. So you lost your big conversation yeah. within a way because... 
yeah, because there was so much already posted on, exactly. on day and date of release. Whereas, like me, it, it, if I bought it on on the first of February, it'd take me two weeks to play it and then review it, and then by then the kind of discourse yeah. has moved on right, to whatever's next. Reverie or Y2K. Yeah, it's like I got the, I got those games early, so but even then, well, apart like, from Y2K, games, but, but Reverie, right? I, I managed to get. Yeah, yeah, and I've. Yeah, and definitely. And like you, the niche of people looking for it is different. Like people are looking specifically for those games, whereas on the bigger sites, people might be there for news on I don't know, like entertainment news, and then they kind of stumble across a wall group, a wall group like review. Y2K, a niche audience, but yeah, the people who are interested will buy it. You are there to yeah. try to get sell people who are not as invested into wanting that game, which is still probably a lot, right? Mm. Is it so? Yeah, I understand yeah, that I, your yeah. I, idea, like, I got work with, I was interested in, I wanted that kind of game. I mean, there's different, people play mm. the game for different reasons, which is why games are amazing. Because it's, you yeah. there's so many different games and so many different ways to play it, and there's, people, there's games for everybody. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's the beauty. So, that's I mean, the beauty there's no of way them, yeah. of saying there's right or wrongs. And that's where these deals come in because it made focus yeah. people who like a different kind of game but are interested in another one and will wait for that deal. Right? Like, say, like, Hollow Knight. Mm-hmm. It's a good uh, action yeah. game, but it's frustrating. So if someone who likes action may mm-hmm. get it when it's on CSL because it may not be their ideal one. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And I guess, like... We are quite lucky. Well, lucky. I guess I don't know. For for some people, like you know, we kind of been talking today. Like, oh, you know, fifteen dollars is cheap. Yeah, it's kind of like a throwaway price. But for some people, it might not be, and they might have like a budget of how many games they can buy a month or how many games they buy a year. And if you're getting a game for half price, then you know that's obviously a a lot more appealing than exactly. than paying like we're both full in price the way or something. Of being lucky. That you know, you as a reviewer have people giving you codes. Yeah, I'm in the game development. I know people from yeah. big companies like Ubisoft and EA. I get games at a lower price from them. Yeah, yeah. So we're lucky in that way. Yeah. So we are a bit more like, oh, I don't mind. But of course, deals are deals, and people are invested. Yeah, in deals that's it, that's it. Because they want to keep their love of their interest yeah. going, but they may kind of afford that price of, mm-hmm. of, of a yeah. full game. Right, and that's why, like, yeah. um, it's interesting to yeah. see uh, what maybe like what Epic Store could do for other consoles, right? Giving a lower, giving more mm. money to developers, yeah. making lower the price, and giving a better price to the consumers. Yeah, yeah, it kind of shakes up the the kind of status quo a little bit. So yeah, guys, that was episode twenty-one of the Switch Indie Fix podcast. Uh, thank you all for listening, Darth. I want to thank you for. Uh, joining me it was really cool having you here anytime and again we'll be doing this again tomorrow so yes exactly we will be going uh we will be doing our pokemon podcast tomorrow so uh if you enjoyed daf on on switch indie fix podcast make sure you, you check out our pokemon podcast where we'll be talking about uh the competitive side of pokemon which in generation eight pokemon. yes and which i know nothing about so i'm interested to learn uh, some new things tomorrow um, the podcast will go up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube as soon as I can after the show. Please be sure to review it wherever you can. If you want to get in contact, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Switch Indie Fix or join the Switch Indie Fix server at Switch Indie Fix, uh, switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord. Come say hello to Darth and me. Uh, Darth, your Twitter is at Darth Stridius, right? Yep. yep exactly. And so it's go follow much Darth. my username there and on Discord. Awesome. Yeah. So. It, Go and follow Daft there on Twitter too. Uh, for more reviews, including our latest review of hashtag kill all zombies, go to switchindiefix.com and leave me a comment letting me know what game I should review next. Uh, thanks again for listening, guys, and I hope you have a good week.